Did you say pornographically? Graphically. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for laughing. I just wanted to make sure you weren't the only one laughing at that joke. <laughs> Hello everyone, this is Mike Check 95 along with my usual cohorts. Cranker Mike is one. And Ya yeah boy. And we have finally picked up where we last left off on this Predator series. We are now doing the review of Predators, also known as Predator 3. Um, first off, before we get into the reviews, as we always do, what are the uh, numbers for this film, my friend? Numbers? Yeah. I suppose. So this this movie came out in 2010. So we put into expectations of 2010 movies. The CGI should be better now. Um, acting should be good. Cinematography should be good. So we are out of the. You don't get the pass from Predator 2. The audience scores this film at a 5.2, and the critics put this at a 6.5. Uh, they made this film on a budget of forty million dollars. Okay, I can see that. I can see that. <laughs> and their box office did fifty-two million dollars. Oh my oh, god! Uh, no, no, money. No, no money. So they made a little bit of money. I wonder why Predator Four took a while to get made. I think that they could have made more money if they didn't have a good cast. Because they just killed them. They literally did not have any. Just filler characters that weren't famous people, other than maybe the Akuza guy. So, as we begin our reviews... Um, it's basically early 2000s Expendables. Yeah, pretty much, yeah. Um, we're, I am going to have uh, Mr. Joker go first so that he can get his thoughts out of the way. Oh, thoughts. I don't have a lot. Uh, do 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 Science time with Josh. And not a lot of science in this movie. The explosions explode. I was a little pissed that the... Um, Flares went out so early. I've personally used flares. They don't go out unless they were somehow old or wet. And even if they're wet, you're supposed to be able to use a flare underwater. Um, so that was very confusing to me. I liked the sneaky sneak of the doctor. Because I was like, why the heck is the doctor here? Because halfway through they were discussing, you know, we're all here because we're all bad. Um, I was like, well, why is the doctor here? And why doesn't he have any medical equipment? Also, the foreshadowing of the poison was kind of cool. I'm just talking about the, the end of the movie, since the the beginning in the middle of it's, you know, just, ah, oh, we're on an island, ah, you know, something's chasing us, ah, don't die, but kill it. There wasn't a lot of uh, discussed dialogue outside of what would be normal for, you know, action, jungle, running, adventure movie. I liked the look of the Predators, plus the tall, skinny, I don't know, metal-looking creature, and the dog creatures. They looked really cool. I liked the the design on them. As Krieger Margin said, we're in newer movies, so CGI is good. They, they actually talk in this movie. They talk loud enough for you to hear. Dialogue is good. It sounds like humans talking to other humans, behaving as if they were rogues who were you know, ex-military, you know, they have families, and they care about families, but they also run and shoot and, I don't know, don't care about each other as much. I didn't feel a lot of heartfelt things in this movie. It didn't teach me much of anything. Not that it was supposed to. It's supposed to be a sci-fi action thriller gore movie, and it has that. There's green blood everywhere, red blood, explosions, fire, gunfire, creatures, monsters. Uh, and so for that, and I, said, I, I might have some other comments later, but I would give this movie a six. It was good. Um, you know, it has that sci-fi thrill. There wasn't a lot of new technology brought in. There wasn't... I didn't feel like there was anything that it brought to the Terminators. I mean, to, sorry, to the... <laughs> Scratch that! Predator series. It was just... Just, it's just a movie. This is actually a cool story about, um, so apparently, um, and this is from like commentary that the director and somebody else had, apparently originally they casted a guy who looked like Danny Trejo, and when Danny Trejo uh, learned this, he called Robert Rodriguez and said, hey, I heard there's a guy 
in the script for Predators who just looks like me. Guess what? I look just like me. (laughs) 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 The alien creature that pursues Edwin um, in the beginning is actually a slightly modified version of the original abandoned Predator design from 1987. Yes, it's right here on the video right now. So the plant that um, that they identified at the beginning um, it, it has a lar- they had a scientific name on it um, that I'm not going to pronounce. It's actually been extinct for several million years, and its origin li- lies in Cretaceous period. Originally, um, in early drafts of this, they were supposed to say that, wow, this is kind of weird. And then later, they realized what it actually is, and they're supposed to have a scene talking about it. The hunting dogs. Um, that were on there were based on one of the creature skulls you can see in the trophy case on Predator 2. There's a bunch, so I'm going to keep reading so you start on your thoughts and I'll interrupt. Okay. Oh, one more. boy. <laughs> I'm just going to hold it here because I know he's going to try to grab it on my hand again. Um, so I'm going to say this right now. I feel like this film gets a lot of hate and a lot of flack for it because every time I've talked to somebody who is like well in depth and like the knowledge of the series, they always talk bad about this one and the fourth one which we'll get to the fourth one when we get to it but they say that this one is really bad and i don't really understand or see why it's like fucking horrible like one of the main grice people have is adrian brody's character and him being the lead cast the lead role character and them saying oh well he he doesn't really have the build or the look of a leading role character or anything we watched The Experiment, and he was a main character in that film. Mm-hmm. Like, he's a good leading role character. I mean, he needs to be big and buff like Arnold or Arthur Baba. That's They're... why people just complain, because he's skinny. I I mean, minus his, I guess, over-the-top Batman voice, um, I think Adrian Brody did really good in this film. Um, really, I think the only character that I thought was really fucking annoying was the, um, the Death Row dude. I think he just had a bad character. Adrian Brody. I didn't. I mean, I didn't really think. I didn't think his character was bad. I don't think his acting was was good. Yeah, they were like, "Be mysterious." I, I don't. I don't. I, I, didn't, I don't think his character was bad. Like, I mean, it, it, I could see that it needed some like tweaks to it, but I think it was good for what it was. Also, with him usually being a slim actor, apparently he put on twenty five pounds of muscle for this role. Oh my lord! So uh, Lawrence Fishburne was in this. Yes. You don't know how much time he took in this film to film his scenes. I want to say a day. A day. Oh, I was gonna. I was gonna say that I'm assuming he did every take the first time. Uh, two days. He, he his entirety in this entire film he did in two days. The original script contained cameo appearances by uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger and Danny Glover. Um, Glover was retired, I think. At that the point. protagonists of the previous Predator films, however, they were ultimately cut out. This is one that I thought Mike would enjoy. When asked where he drew his inspiration on how to make a Predator film, Robert Rodriguez responded with, he was inspired to do uh, what to do from Pre- Predator 1 and what not to do by Predator 2, <laughs> Alien vs. Predator, Alien vs. Predator Requiem. <laughs> do you think it's this movie kind of didn't do so well because of the previous movies? No, I think it's because people see it as another Wash, Rinse, Repeat film. And I'm like, there's more to this film than Wash, Rinse, Repeat. Like, they're on the fucking planet! But they didn't do anything. They're uh, on the planet. The reason why I gave, I, mean, I kind of yeah. gave you a funny look with the like saying nothing really happened or anything. Again, there is new species in this thing. There is new equipment in this movie because the normal predator blaster just goes pee pee. The super predators goes the stronger laser. Uh, they have a big fucking head. <laughs> the alien, the alien dogs. Like just the fact that it's like it's on one of the planets. That's not Earth, and they're using that to pretty much practice their hunting skills. So far, I mean, the first three Predator films, I have not said anything bad about them. Yet. The weapon used by Royce was an AA-12, which is a fully automatic 12-gauge shotgun, um, which is interesting because there are zero scenes showing explosive ammunition. To assume when they directed this, they loaded it with buckshot if they were to do this, or he was using buckshot in a... Yeah, okay. All in all, um... I feel like this film could have gotten a little bit more appreciation. Uh, to me, it's a big step up from Predator 2 and a, I'd say a little bit of a st- step up from Predator 1, but it's it's still really cool that it's on one of the planets and everything. I am going to give it a rating. 
of an 8.3 out of 10 because I feel like this is a good this is a good sci-fi horror action movie that people oh. need to watch like that this is a good standalone film you can watch by itself and not, and not connect it to any of the other films like all of these films so far you can watch it standalone and just be like oh cool they what I'm saying a lot is of similarities too yes like uh, but I'm was a guy with the, the one dude who had the fight but it, they actually showed it yeah that's why that's another reason why I like this film is the fucking sword fight. <laughs> Also, I loved it. Also, Sorry, this this movie wasn't called Predator Three, which I was kind of like, "That's weird. Why does it say Predators?" But this this one explains it. Um, instead, they add an S to it to make it plural in a tribute to how Alien went from Alien to Aliens. Oh, also to compare on the quality of this film, this film had the same budget as Aliens vs Predator Requiem. Yeah, which is terrible. My opinion on this film now that I've got the little cool tidbits out of the way. Yes, this film is interesting because I think think that it's much better than the AVPs. Uh, the style of it is a lot better than the previous ones. Um, I do have some problems with it because it kind of it did have a long runtime for not a bunch of extra value for it. They could have cut this film down a little bit less and we would have had the same kind of effect to it. Yeah. Um, they, they, they didn't... The ending wasn't super satisfying because they're like, okay, let's find a way off this planet. And they doesn't show them ever getting off the planet. You know we're not getting a sequel to this film ever. They should have just had some kind of conclusion where they either die or, or, or they get off the planet somehow. That was the plan, I'm assuming. They have a sequel of them getting off the planet. I heard, well, then again, I heard it was continued in comics, but it's great. I'm going to assume that that movie will never happen. <laughs> so on the way that they did things, I felt like some of the guns didn't make sense. I really had a problem at the beginning of the film when they're falling through the sky and then they have like a mini gun that yeah. Again, it's it's Taktarov. He's a big strong Russian dude, knows how to punch people right. He's a big strong dude. Also, Taktarov's character was supposed to be somebody who was like super experienced and he had to drop on somebody with a minigun and he shot a lot when they didn't know he was there <laughs> he was and he not... missed like 200 300 bullets. The cast was great. That was my favorite part of the film was not what they did or the characters themselves, but the cast cuz they were cool people. I, I felt like writing wise they could have made these characters a little bit more deep with yeah. the amount of money they spent on a cast I want to say like with the material they had and the script they had I feel like the dialogue was as good as it was going to get I still enjoyed w with what they put on the table but I know that someone in the writing booth could have done something better but what we got I thought it was still good for, for like because the they only spent three months to make this movie yeah Oh my god, that, that, a movie like that needs like six to eight months. Yeah, it, I, they should I feel like they could have took their time and wrote the story better. Also, you gotta blame, uh, like Fox. also, what was interesting is the Rodriguez guy, the guy, the director, he was originally offered this while he was working on a different movie uh, years before that, and he said the budget was too high. So then he came back to this, and then he updated it, and he was like, fine, I'll do it with a higher budget. And apparently, instead of the reason he didn't, it's expected a better movie if you have a higher budget instead of actually making a better movie it kind of seems like he just got people that wanted more money and was like all right cool i feel like he just didn't care about the project i think that's what the problem was is that like the, the director didn't really care he also said this wasn't going to be anything in the predator versus alien thing it was only going to be predator continuation one. of predator yes. one he was not going to reference any other film other than predator one Okay, so whenever uh, Morpheus's character, um, so earlier in the thing, they were talking about the first one, Arnold Schwarzenegger, how he had survived and how he had described what the predator looked like. That's how they knew what they was, what they were. And then, like one of the first interactions, whenever they said he's like, "I'm the one who survived," and I know that he, he was trying to like establish his character that he's a survivor and he's scavenging and stuff. But the first thought I was like, "Do they just try and like retcon?" that he's Arnold Schwarzenegger no, and that he got stuck in here. They, I know that that's not what they did, but that thought should have never crossed through my mind, yeah. and I feel like that was I bad writing. I could see that as like a confusion and like not understanding the dialogue and the story. Because like, in the when she was explaining it, he said he went back and reported it to his actually official officers and everything, and if he weren't paying attention, people would assume that Dutch, or the character who was not named Dutch, but the character that she was talking about was... Um, Silver Surfer, but yeah. But yeah. The thing is, the humor in this was kind of flat. Like there they was, there were like a couple things like jokes, like like, like rape, like the rape joke. I hate my that's, sister's titties. That's why I didn't like that guy. 
uh, not just him either. It was like, hi, these are my kids. I want to get back to them. And then later it was like, but I have kids. It's like, screw that's, you. See, that just that wasn't even funny. That and was so, just supposed to show his like sleaziness. Yeah, but they like changing atmosphere and stuff like that. It was, it was all flat jokes. There wasn't anything specifically funny, and it was more awkward and weird. Okay, and so it's better if they just cut it out and made it serious. So Death Row time. guy was making those jokes because he's a piece of shit. I know. Eddie but, Brock. There was no was reason to doing have that. that because it was trying to show hints to the, the audience that he's not really the nice guy like you think he is. He's kind of sleazy and a fuck. I disagree. So, so, oh. I agree, but I disagree. So, so, at that time, from that perspective from him, he was trying to do what's common is, uh, th so the whole deal was they were going to do something cruel to him and leave him behind, right? Um, in that moment, if he, if somebody knows your family and knows that you're a person, they tend to think of you more. So, as a character in that situation, at that point, it grows sympathy and sh it builds on the fact that he's really smart. And it, but in the future, looking back, once you find out that he's a piece of shit, that's where the oh, okay, that guy's just being cause, sleazy. He, I so, was wallet. So Tartarov was showing his these are my kids in there. They yeah. handed it to him, but he never gave it back. Okay, that's what I was gonna say. Was like, all of a sudden, boom, 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 explosions. Okay, yeah. that's what I was, I was gonna say. It's like, how the heck did he get it? It's like, did he like, he didn't go back and pick it up from his dead no, body because his body it. was blood. He never gave it okay, back. Okay, that explains it. I was confused by that. But he played a good character. I enjoyed his character. Um, and, and then if you watch it twice, you're like, oh, that makes sense why he didn't fit at all, and it doesn't make sense why he's there. Because yeah. at first I was like, oh, okay, they got him there because he's super smart, you know. No, he's, no, he's, he's a sick fuck. The whole time. But and he had the lazy eyed like death stare. I'm sure if you rewatch that that stare that he had, where it's super awkward. I, I know he had like two lazy eyes going on, and that I was not an like, accident. It was the See, that, LSD like trip she was going on. That 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 was okay. Ignoring the LSD trip, that's the one thing I didn't like about his character is that he was trying to look all evil and all sinister and like sly like as fuck. Dog. He looked like he was a doofus. Raper McRaper. And high as fuck. He was like. Oh yeah, I'm a murderer from where I am. I'll make you slow, painful, and watch you bleed out. And I'm like, he looked like he just smoked fucking three fucking joints and then got bonked in the head and went dumb. Also, they could have done more. They could have done more with the character too. That would have made him more bad. I like, like they just shouldn't pick toll for Grace. Like if he would have killed somebody halfway through or somebody, yeah. and then they revealed it. Like somebody thought it was an alien, but then he was like, oh no, or a predator. But then he was like, oh no, it wasn't. Overall in the series, I, I think this is one of the most well-done ones. I think it's better than two. Um, I think I like it better than one, but one is a classic, so one gets above it. But if it was on the movie itself standpoint, this was done a little bit more this better. Was, this, okay, like for me, this is hard to call on this one because like we've sat, we've seen all three of them and everything. I give this a seven. Wait, what was your rating again? Seven. Seven? Seven. So for me, for like the standpoint and the rating so far, since we're doing these on these now, it's hard for me to place this one because, like I said, I liked all three of them for all their different reasons. But I would probably still say the first one is the best because of nostalgic purposes, and it just it. I think it's well more well done. It's got a better story. It has more character development, better dialogue, and everything. Uh, and then I feel like the second one is good, but it's a little corny, a little like doohickey, a little like, oh, we're yippee ki ace. Let's see what happens when we put this character, a monster, in a scenario where he's not supposed to be in. Like, imagine seeing a, a fish in the fucking trees and see what happens for two and a half hours. That's what that kind of feels like, but it's done well enough to be entertaining and corny and whatnot. This one. I want to say that for me, it's a hair better than the second one, just because it follows the formula of the first one more, and you're getting newer elements of the actual Predator verse from like the world building on their planets and whatnot, the different species and everything, the the slight changes in weapons and everything. I just like this one a little bit more. Um, yeah. Well, um, folks, we are done with Predator 3, or Predators. Um, I am going to rip my eyeballs out when we watch the fourth one. And I will find that clip.
as we start the first one to show us and show the fans what me and Krieger's first experience with Predator 4 or The Predator was. But until then, this is Mike Check 95 along with my cohorts. <laughs> Krieger Margin 1. And Orphan Joker. And we are signing out. And watch out for the tri-beam. Oh, <laughs> my